Hi, I'm Laura Eklow. Welcome to the San Diego Experience Center. We're excited to have you here on Facebook Live with us. We are gonna wait a couple more minutes to allow people to log on, get everything set up. Uh, we will be hosting a virtual version of our tour today. We wish you could have, uh, have you here with us in person, but unfortunately that is not the case. So we'll at least get to give you a little glimpse into a couple of things. I will be watching and moderating the Q&A session, so be sure to remember to put your questions in the chat box. We'll get to as many of them as we can before we run out of time. Thanks so much, we'll kick off soon. Welcome to our live Facebook event. I'm Patrick O'Keefe, CEO of Symer Light Source, a division of ASML. Well, as you all know, today is Bring Your Kids to Work Day. Um, for the second year in a row, we're having to do that virtually, as Laura mentioned. Normally, we'd have 300 plus kids of our employees running around the campus, engaged in interactive and fun STEM projects. We do this every year in an effort to convince our kids that what we do here is actually fun. If you're not familiar with who we are, we are ASML, and the space that I'm standing in today was built to tell our story. ASML makes equipment that's used in the patterning of microchips. Here in San Diego, we are the light source center of excellence for ASML. So our story is all about generating new light. The light that we produce here is a critical component of ASML's equipment and is used in the production of all of the microchips that we see in the technologies around us today and in the development of technologies in the future. I'm joined today by two of my colleagues, Josh and Drew, and they will show you two of the interactive stations that we have here in our Experience Center. Josh will cover the deep ultraviolet light source, and Drew will talk about our leading edge extreme ultraviolet light source. Of course, we'd love to hear all your questions, so please put those in the chat, and we will reserve time at the end for a live Q&A. So with that, let me take you over and introduce you to my colleague, Josh. Josh? Thanks, Patrick. I'm Josh. I'm a laser scientist who, for the last 11 years, have been working here at ASML San Diego on our deep ultraviolet light sources. You're probably asking yourself right now, ultraviolet? Is that a real color? And while ultraviolet light is invisible to our human eyes, it is um, a color of light. And if you could see it, if we had special eyes or sensors, and you had a rainbow, you would find that ultraviolet light would appear on the rainbow past the blue, indigo, and violet, and therefore we call it ultraviolet light. Now, the color of light is something that we laser scientists are very interested in and is especially important for patterning of semiconductor chips. So, um, what I'm gonna to explain today is a hands-on experiment which shows how we select a very specific color within that deep ultraviolet range for, your, for that use. So the way we do that is using something called refraction is one of the key um, properties of light. And refraction describes the way that light bends as it goes from one material to another. You can experience this for yourself at home by taking a glass and filling it with water and looking through the glass and you'll see that the image looks funny. The light is being bent by the refraction of the light through the water. In fact, this is the way we get a rainbow in the sky is you have refraction through a water droplet. That water droplet spreads out and lets us see all the beautiful colors in our sunlight of which, and um, we can use the same thing for our light sources. But instead of a water droplet, we use a triangular piece of glass called a prism, which I have here. And this prism allows us to spread out like a rainbow, the different colors of light within our light source and select a very narrow one that is useful for patterning of microchips. Now, why do we care so much about the color or as we laser scientists call it, the wavelength of light? Well, we care about it because again of refraction when we're making the pattern on the chip, the light has to travel through a lens and that lens works by refraction. So therefore, by, if the color is a little bit off or there's too many colors going through the lens, instead of a nice sharp image and a small features, you get a blurry image. So we, working with our colleagues in Veldhoven, have to make a very specific color of light. But our innovation with color doesn't stop there. And I want to introduce you to Drew, who will talk to you about extreme ultraviolet, which is, an, which is our continued innovation with color 
and light. And if you have any questions about deep UV technology, please put them in the chat. I'll answer them as best we can in the live Q&A session. And now to introduce you to Drew. Great, thanks a lot, Josh. Uh, so we've been working on deep UV light sources for over 35 years um, and EUV light sources, extreme ultraviolet, um, while they're a much newer technology, still feel like it's been a really long time coming. Many thought we'd never get there, um, but now, for instance, if you have a new iPhone, you have chips made with EUV right in your pocket. So my name is Drew LaForge. I'm a former technology development scientist and engineering director, and I want to first answer the question, what makes EUV such a big deal? Um, so because ultraviolet light, because EUV light has a wavelength that is 10 times smaller, over 10 times smaller than that used in DUV light sources, uh, it means we can make features on chips, smaller features with fewer steps, which leads to uh, more powerful devices at lower cost. So that's, the, that's why it's important to us and why, why hopefully it's important to you. Um, I wanna show a couple of um, pieces of technology that are fundamental to the EUV light source. The first is called the droplet generator. This is a, has a reservoir of hot liquid tin that when pressurized can eject liquid tin droplets out of a nozzle at 50,000 times per second. So those droplets go flying into a vacuum vessel where they're hit by a very powerful pulsed laser. Here's an image of the laser on the board here, or a schematic of one. Um, each droplet gets hit by the laser where it's heated, evaporated, and ionized, turning each droplet really into a miniature sun. So light from that plasma, the miniature sun, then goes into the scanner where it can be used for patterning chips. Now, Josh mentioned that deep UV light can be focused using lenses, but EUV light is strongly absorbed by elements in lenses that needs to be focused using reflection. So we use mirrors. So this is what's called a collector mirror it has to be made with atomic level precision. And we go to great lengths to protect its surface from the heat, radiation, and tin that comes out of our plasma. Um, so these are just a couple of examples of technology elements that power our source. And um, now we'll go to, to Patrick to wrap it up. Thank you, Drew and Josh. Well, I hope you all found that very interesting. Unfortunately, today we could only show you two of the five interactive exhibits that we have here in our Experience Center. We also have an interactive theater and a number of product exhibits that bring you up close with our technology. We would love to, of course, have you all here in person, and we look forward to doing that in the not too distant future. The job of developing new technology is never done, so we're always looking for curious people to join our team, help us innovate and drive our product roadmap forward. Remember to follow us on Facebook, and if you want to learn more about who we are, what we do, and why we're important to the world, please check us out at asml.com. We also have had some pre-submitted questions, so I think we can move to those right now. Thanks, Patrick, and the first one is all about DUV, so I'll bring Josh back up to answer that for us. Josh, you said that we've been working on DUV for more than 35 years now. It's clearly the mature technology. Uh, what innovations have recently happened and what's still coming for DUV as still a valuable part of the portfolio? Yeah, so in DUV, as you said, it's a mature product. We, we build on the shoulders of giants like our founders, Bob and Rick, and there's just innovation after innovation to get us to this point. Our most recent innovation, which we here in uh, San Diego are especially proud of, is our new pulse stretcher on our XLR 960. It added almost 100 meters or 100 yards of, of path length. We had to fit that into the laser somewhere, and it took a huge effort from almost every single portion of our division here in San Diego to bring that to, bring that to market. Um, but the quest for innovation never ends, even for a mature product like DUV. There's always a need for every nanometer of resolution that we can get to make those chips a little better, a little more powerful, and we continue to um, look for those along with our colleagues in Veldhoven and around the globe. Great, thanks Josh. That's good to hear that DUV still has a ton going on. And our next question I'll give to Patrick over here since you are our veteran of the group. So what do you think has been the thing that has most changed since you 
started at Symer all that time ago to now with us as ASML in 2021? I think for me, probably the biggest change that I've seen um, in, my, in my tenure has been when Symer became part of the ASML group. Um, obviously, being part of such a large company opens up tremendous challenges for us and growth opportunities for all of our employees. And so for me, I think that was probably the most significant change that I've seen. Great. Thank you, Patrick. Happy to be here as part of the ASML family. And our last one is for Drew as an EUV-focused question. Our Facebook page recently saw us announce that we shipped our 100th EUV system. So what is next for EUV now that we've reached this awesome milestone? Yeah, so the fact that we've gotten to 100 systems is, is wild. Uh, this is something, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, it was a doubt would we ever get there, would we ever make it happen and as a real product that would be something you could use to make chips uh, for, for regular people. Um, so uh, we had to overcome a lot of challenges to get there with uh, making very high power lasers to make a stable enough droplet generator to the gas flows inside our vessel that protect the collector mirror I showed. Um, so a lot to get here and then from now on, we, the challenges are scaling up in power to make these machines higher throughput so they're more cost effective and allow for, uh, for uh, even, even cheaper devices for us. And so uh, we're, the, uh, the EUV is only becoming more essential as a part of the technology for the, the most advanced chips right now. So the chips being used for self-driving cars, for 5G, these require the, the feature size and the control that, that EUV provides. So only more demand for EUV systems in the future. Thank you for joining us today. We're so excited that you got to get a little sneak peek of our new space in the Experience Center here in San Diego.